This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. He visited China twice within two months after taking office. He expressed his commitment to carrying forward and promoting the traditional friendship between China and Cambodia, and aligning the Belt and Road Initiative with the country's development strategy. He said cooperation can benefit everyone. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Mane sits down for an exclusive interview with Leaders Talk. Stay tuned. Welcome to Leaders Talk, where we meet leaders, thinkers, and trailblazers. I'm Zhou Yun. Our guest today is the new Prime Minister of Cambodia, Hun Manet. After taking office in August, he chose China to make his first state visit abroad. And about one month later, he's back here in China to attend the Third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. A decade since its founding, what concrete achievements have the initiative been made in the bilateral cooperation? How will the synergy between China's BRI and Cambodia's Panama strategy be enhanced? And how will the two countries further enrich the content of the China-Cambodia community with a shared future? Let's find answers in today's Leaders Talk. Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, great to have you with us on Leaders Talk. Well, you're here in Beijing this time for the third Build and Road Forum for International Cooperation. And you were at the opening ceremony together with uh, world leaders and representatives with over 150 countries, as well as more than 40 international organizations listening to the keynote speech delivered by President Xi. So to start with, can you share with us uh, some of the major takeaway from President Xi's speech as well as uh, from the forum? Well, I think our participation in the forum uh, three years in a row is a show of our support for the BRI and BRF. And uh, this is my first uh, trip to uh, join the uh, Bell and Road Forum. Mm -hmm. And I uh, first would like to uh, congratulate uh, President Xi Jinping and China government for organizing successful uh, forum. The representative from all over the world, especially developing countries. I think as Cambodia, we have uh, benefited a lot from the BRI's a Bell and Road Initiative through our development strategy under the BI's programs. China is the very first country you visited since taking office, and I think this uh, shows the great significance both sides put on this ironclad relation, given its historical linkage and uh, traditional friendship. So as the new Prime Minister of Cambodia, what is your plan to take this already a uh, very solid tie to an even higher level. If you were to sum up our relationship or our direction of policy engagement with China in two words, uh, it would be continuity and uh, consistency. This year is the 65th anniversary of our diplomatic relationship yes. and a year of uh, Cambodia-China friendships. Mm -hmm. Uh, this coincides with my assumptions of position as the head of uh, the government of Cambodia. For the new government of Cambodia, our goal is to continue to build on this good relationship where that uh, lasted for 65 years, uh, and also to seek to expand cooperation, uh, strengthen, especially in terms of uh, seeking ways to improve the uh, diamond hexagons cooperation framework, which was uh, established early this year yes. by President Xi Jinping and former Prime Minister Sundek Tikjo Hun Sen. The new government is committed to uh, uphold the One China policy. We also support uh, initiatives that put forward by President Xi Jinping, such as the uh, Global Development Initiative, mm -hmm. Global Security Initiative, mm -hmm. Global Civilization Initiative, yes. and also the BRI, which uh, would provide a platform for to strengthen the world in a harmonious and prosperous way. Just now you mentioned about those initiatives proposed by President Xi. So can you be a little bit more specific about the uh, significance of uh, those initiatives uh, in tackling the uh, global challenges and also the unprecedented situation faced by the world today? Yes, you know, Cambodia was among the first countries to uh, support those initiatives. 
uh, like I say, um, this initiative is a main contributor to achieving harmony and uh, prosperity of the world. For example, Global Development Initiative, which uh, stress on the goals of uh, inclusive development, uh, focusing on the uh, poverty alleviations and increasing health of people, especially in less developed countries. Also focus on the green development, which is important for climate change uh, issues that we all face right now. Global Security Initiative, uh, it's a focus, it's emphasis on diplomacies and multilateralism as a means to deal with uh, regional issues uh, or international issues such as conflicts, both uh, traditional and non-traditional matters. And the Global uh, Civilizations Initiative is, uh, you know, it's stressed on the respects of each other's views and civilizations, the different views, and also to uh, support the aspirations for respect and non-interference with each other's uh, internal affairs based on disrespect of each other's civilization and different views. Uh, if you've seen recent experience, you see um, it is rarely that a country can uh, escape or insulate it from global events such as uh, pandemics, such as the war. It just reflects the reality or the words of a uh, global community with a shared future. This has uh, given us the uh, necessities to work together on a joint effort to be more considerate and more responsible for the futures of the world and not just any particular uh, country's uh, futures alone. We have to sing it in the global uh, aspects. In August 2023, Hun Mane was appointed as Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia. In September, he chose China as the first country to visit after taking office. It fully reflected the high regard of the new Cambodian government for consolidating and developing the friendly China-Cambodia relations. In October, he visited China again to attend the Third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation and met with Chinese President Xi Jinping. President Xi stated that both China and Cambodia are countries that value friendship and that the China-Cambodia ironclad friendship is unbreakable. Today, this friendship has already been transformed into practical achievements that benefit the people of both countries. In 2022, bilateral trade between China and Cambodia reached 16 billion US dollars, an increase of 17.5% year on year, setting a historic high. China has been Cambodia's largest trading partner for 11 consecutive years. Cambodian mangoes, bananas, cashews, and rice have entered ordinary households in China. Under the cooperation framework of building the Belt and Road, Cambodia has released its enormous development potential, and many projects such as highways, hydropower stations, economic zones, airports, ports, and stadiums have been launched. I want to share with you some really special experience when we were in Cambodia back in January, because our team, we not only visited the uh, Nong Pen Sikhanukville Expressway, we also got on a ride with a truck driver who traveled along the road. And he told me that before, it uh, usually took them about one to two days to get back and forth. But now, thanks to the expressway, they can travel two to three times a day. So that is really remarkable progress. And that experience has really amazed me by witnessing all those tangible changes and benefits the BRI projects are created to ordinary people, like the truck driver we just mentioned. So, what's your take on that? The uh, Belt and Road Initiative is uh, designed to help uh, develop and provide access and opportunities for less developed countries to develop, especially access to financing, access to technicals, uh, transfer technologies, and uh, quicker access to abilities to build infrastructures need needed to support development and growth. Uh, in terms of uh, the BRIs, I think for Cambodia, we have uh, greatly benefit from that, uh, as well as many countries. Uh, yesterday, a lot of uh, speakers, head of states, head of governments came up and speak about the 
benefits that receive from the BRIs. So Cambodia shared this perspective and experience. You raised the examples of uh, Phnom Penh uh, Sihanouk Wheel Expressway, which has uh, provided benefits not just to a certain group of people, but to ordinary peoples, to everybody. Everyday uh, citizens. Yes, everyday citizens, not just those who need to travel uh, using ex you know, the expressway, but the effect that it has on the economies. It's improved logistics, it's uh, improved trade facilitation, it's helped to promote growth, which has a broad base for our peoples. So for Cambodia, uh, the BRI also linked with our uh, pentagonal uh, strategies, mm -hmm. which is aimed to improve the infrastructure and connectivity. And also under the BRI, uh, two days ago, we were able to start receiving uh, passengers from our new Airport, airport in yes. Siem Reap, which is one of the landmark projects under mm -hmm. the BRI uh, with support of a BRI program. So this type of uh, progress that would leave the impact on the livelihood of the peoples in those countries, including Cambodia, so this is uh, uh, what Cambodia value. Just now you mentioned that the uh, development roadmap of Cambodia has made its transition from the rectangular strategy now to Pentagon strategy with yes. the newly added focus on sustainable development. Yes. Another part that is really crucial to this development is uh, advancing science and technology. Yes. So what is your vision in working more closely with China in this regard? Technology is the future and it's present in its futures. We have to embrace it. Okay. In the Pentagon's uh, strategy, what is added as another angle is digital economy. With China has a growing powers in uh, the new technologies. Uh, a lot of companies have uh, very new innovative ideas. Many of Chinese companies have a world dominance in terms of technologies, capabilities. So by having engagement with China, especially in terms of private sectors to private sectors, we would be able to promote technological transfers and also investment to Cambodia, which bring out those technology to Cambodia for training our workforces to have an external effect on our infrastructures. So these are uh, the areas that uh, Cambodia and uh, find that uh, China a relationship between our two countries can benefit, provide mutual benefit for both our countries. And that is why you have met with some uh, senior um, representatives and um, you know executives from uh, those high-tech Chinese companies like Huawei during your visit last time and maybe this time as well, right? Yes, uh, actually I had a chance to meet a lot with uh, private sectors, uh, many of the companies that have uh, been investing in Cambodia and many more has been uh, interested in investing in Cambodia. You know, uh, companies such as uh, investors in energies, in renewable energies that uh, have been our uh, countries to secure a uh, what we call to build a foundation for uh, security, uh, energy security in the futures. Also, with regardings to environmental impacts through renewable energies and technologies to bring companies like Huawei that's been operating in uh, Cambodia will encourage uh, further investment in bringing more technologies. Also, not just in the physical uh, technology, physical investments. Platforms such as uh, we had a uh, signing between our Ministry of Commerce with uh, Alibaba Group. Mm -hmm. So we can't uh, put on the global platform to allow our farmers, our small and medium enterprises to expand their market outreach through those. And also uh, companies like Bank of China's group and also that provide access for and technologies as well. So I've been uh, very happy to see the progress in the relation between government and government, government and businesses and business to business mm -hmm. between our two countries. Let's talk a little bit about China-ASEAN cooperation. Well, both sides are now looking to upgrade this cooperation, which is called 3.0 free trade agreement between the two sides. So what role do you think Cambodia could play in this process? It is important to recognize that uh, uh, China is uh, ASEAN's number one uh, trading partners mm -hmm. and also is ASEAN's third largest foreign direct 
investment uh, flow, source of uh, foreign direct investment to ASEAN. The initiative to upgrade the uh, you know, Asian-China free trade agreement, uh, ACTA 3.0, was initiated, uh, adopted last year in Phnom Penh when Cambodia chaired uh, the chairmanship of ASEAN. I think the main principles is to, you know, uh, have increase the status of our trade relationship in a sense that to promote and to improve the mechanism and conditions that uh, ASEAN and China can improve the uh, trade of goods and services between the two countries. It's uh, aimed to revive the economy post-COVID-19 and also build the conditions that allow the trade relationship to withstand and to adapt to the new uh, global trends such as uh, climate change and digitization. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I think Cambodia and China can work with our foreign trade uh, um, partners uh, in ASEANs in order to contribute to the uh, facilitation of these uh, matters. Wait a minute. Oh, you got the Canadian <laughs> products. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, I want to share some delights with you. Maybe something that you're very familiar with yes. from Cambodia is dried see. mango and uh, cashew, cashew nuts. nuts yes. So now, um, with the help of the Belt and Road Initiative, RCEP, as well as the free trade agreement between China and uh, Cambodia. Mm. So not only an increasing number of Cambodian agricultural products have gained their access and presence to the Chinese market, mm. their production, their added value have been greatly enhanced as well. So what is your plan in strengthening the economic and trade relation between the two countries? Well, I think there's room, a lot of rooms uh, to improve on this. Uh, last visit, uh, after my official visit to Beijing, I attend the uh, China ASEAN Expo, where many of Cambodian's uh, producers, Cambodian private sectors, came to present at the expo of their products mm -hmm. and have made connection with the locals, uh, suppliers and consumers. So I want to see more of this, and not just on the agricultural products, but also in other uh, products as well. Uh, in the futures, mm -hmm. and I just signed a, a sub decrease to uh, reduce some of the uh, tax burden for the export, so can improve more competitiveness mm -hmm. of our export of uh, raw stones to China, so to make finished products on that, for example. Since taking office, Prime Minister Hun Mane has spoken about his philosophy of governance at several public events as well as on social media. Facing many global challenges, we are living in a difficult time with great uncertainties. Cambodia will further endeavor to strengthen and expand good cooperation with nations around the world. Truth be told, the world has not witnessed such a great global initiative in decades. For this, I express my sincere admiration to the People's Republic of China for shouldering these heavy responsibilities and exercising global leadership. Hun Mane values international cooperation and urges his government to improve efficiency, embrace technological innovation, and speed up economical digital transformation. He pins his hopes on the Pentagon strategy to guide Cambodia's social and economic development for the next 25 years. We interviewed your father, the yes. then uh, Prime Minister, His Excellency Mr. Han Sun, back in January. And I asked him about what is paramount in governing the country. And I remember he said, without any hesitation, that peace and uh, political stability is the key to everything. So, Mr. Prime Minister, what would be your priority of governance and in building a high-income country by 2050, as you have envisioned when first taking office? We just achieved the national unities in 1998 under the win-win policy implemented, uh, initiated by some like Lei Chiu Hun Sen, former prime ministers. So we understand the importance and necessities to keep peace and stability as a foundation for growth. As a new government, our commitment is to preserve all the achievements that have been made by uh, previous governments, mm -hmm. and namely, and one of the core pillars is peace and stability. 
and also to seek to expand the areas of growth through reforms and also through the uh, corporations and through the promotion of other activities that help us you know, achieve our 2050 goals. Mm -hmm. But back again, the foundations that we need to sustain is the most important is peace and political stability that mm -hmm. as a foundation for economic developments. And that is why you have said, quote unquote, here we must work together to protect peace and our national unity at all costs, right? Yes. Uh, the training in uh, the military, also my previous job in terms of as an army chief before I assume my position as premiership, give me a clear uh, view of a strength, I mean, a need to strengthen uh, security cooperations between countries. Mm -hmm. Because we are tackling cross-border issues, cross-border criminal activity, cross-border threat, such as uh, uh, from uh, even uh, non-traditional threats, such as uh, humanitarian disasters, and terrorisms, which can affect all of us. And what would be your take on enhancing cooperation with China in some non-traditional security areas, such as uh, combating cross-border crime and maybe internet fraud? We have been working so hard with uh, uh, China over the years to tackle these issues. Mm -hmm. This criminal activity does not only affects uh, people's uh, or trade or repetition of the countries, but it affects the safety of our population who have to live in the areas affected. So it's not just a cooperation with China, but within Cambodia itself, I have uh, put an emphasis. We have uh, five uh, priorities of the new governments uh, in terms of reforms, in terms of civil servants, health education, law enforcement is one of them, and judicial reform in order to strengthen our abilities and our commitment to fight against crimes, cross-border crimes, uh, anti-drugs, and uh, other criminal activities. Our national police has uh, been working with uh, uh, Chinese uh, police and relevant ministries in order to strengthen cooperation in our joint effort to fight against this type of activities. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, besides being a veteran politician, you're also a loving father of three kids who sometimes uh, posted family photo on social media network proudly and also sent your son to school even after taking office. And uh, we also learned that your kids are learning Chinese and your eldest daughter could even write down birthday wishes in Chinese for her grandfather's birthday. Was that true? Yes, uh, it's all true. It's that of my first daughter's. Mm -hmm. It's her initiative, actually. When she was about uh, six years old, uh, mm -hmm. she went to a, an event uh, where some of Cambodian Chinese families as friends, and she come back, she asked to learn uh, that as well. After that, the sister, mm -hmm. my second one, and the third one also study. So when uh, my daughters don't want me and my wife to understand when they were speaking Chinese. <laughs> That's really smart, huh? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the values that you hear the most when it comes to parenting your kid? Well, setting by examples is quite important. That's what my father showed me also. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the families that uh, my father was busy all the time. It's rarely the chance that he spent with us very small. His action, his consideration, his care, and his focus on teaching us the hard work, mm -hmm. the respect for others, the ideas of uh, taking care of each other is there, always there. For me, since my daughter was born, I always uh, travel all the time. Don't have much time with that, but the little time we have, I would teach her the same what my parents teach us. There's one word that uh, my father has taught us since we all grow up is never think of yourself as a son or daughters or prime ministers, but think of yourself as the grandchildren of a farmer. And this is, has been great foundations of uh, me, my brothers, and now we pass down to our children as well. What do you admire the most about your father? He's always a man of dedication, high responsibility, who does not afraid, he's not afraid to risk his life for 
the duty for the countries and the peoples. He been a role model for me, uh, not because he is the prime minister, but the role models in terms of dedication and hard work toward whatever work he's done. He just did his best as a soldier, as commanders, as foreign ministers, or anything that you do is focus, do the best you can, not looking at anything beyond that. So I think this is one of the values and the, the role model example that he provides to me is do the best we can and be responsible for what our actions. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, I want to talk uh, about another topic that is really close to your heart is about tourism in Cambodia. Yes. Because Cambodia is a very famous tourism destination for its ancient wonders and captivating scenes. And Cambodian Ministry of uh, Tourism has launched a special program called China Ready, hoping to attract more Chinese visitors. So, Mr. Prime Minister, why not take this opportunity to share with us a little bit about how Cambodia is getting ready in terms of uh, security, in terms of accommodation and more to attract more Chinese uh, tourists? Cambodia view tourism as one of the main source for economic growth and uh, development. We were happy to have uh, a lot of tourism, uh, uh, tourists from China. Before COVID-19, we have about 2.3 million visitors. And we hope to raise that back uh, to the levels uh, pre-COVID and beyond. Our strategy, our Ministry of uh, Tourism has put on very active program trying to attract the uh, tourists back, especially from uh, China. Mm -hmm. I understand that there has been uh, some information or so news that caused concern among the Chinese public and perception about security matters in Cambodia. We acknowledge that there are some issues. No countries have zero crimes. Every country has crimes. But those crimes or uh, criminal activities does not represent the whole Cambodia. Besides small issues in certain areas, Cambodia overly uh, peaceful countries, secured countries. Please, uh, my message to a Chinese tourist, please go visit Cambodia, explore all the opportunities that Cambodia can offer, which I think is a kingdom of wonder. Many tourists go into Cambodia, visit. Cambodian people are nice people, friendly, always smile. We always have cultural, big cultural heritage, a lot of uh, temples. My appeal to our Chinese friends, uh, visitors, to come and visit Cambodia to explore the, what Cambodia can offer, our cultures, our peoples, and, uh, and uh, you know, our connections with you. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing with us your very insightful views on the Belt and Road Initiative, on better relations, and also all this very touching and emotional stories from your family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. June, again for having me on this program. Thank you. Thank you. During the interview, Prime Minister Halmanad expressed his strong support for the Belt and Road Initiative. He said that Cambodia and China have enjoyed a time-tested and ironclad friendship for generations, and the initiative has brought tangible benefits to people of both countries. In the future, he looks forward to working with China to solidify win-win cooperation and expand collaboration in emerging fields such as green industry and digital economy and build a better community with a shared future for both countries. With that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Leaders Talk. I'm Zoe reporting from Beijing. Many thanks for watching and see you next time.